Hello friends, welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson. I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church. I'm so excited that you've joined us today for worship. We'll be continuing a series entitled, Jesus Revealed, the I Am Statements in the Gospel of John. Now my hope is that you won't only join us today for worship, but this evening we are actually starting a, a, a series based off the book, a Bible study. So I hope you join us for uh, that as well as the worship today. Sarah will be on a little bit later to let you know how to sign up for those two studies. One of them is tonight, which is a Sunday, and one of them will be Tuesday. So uh, look those up on Church Center Online, and Sarah will explain how to do that later. Let's go ahead and join together in worship and praise.
Hello Church, my name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome Church. As we prepare to hear today's message, I want to invite you to connect with us during this time of online worship together. During today's message, you can use the chat or comment function on any platform that you're watching on to share your thoughts or your prayer concerns with our staff and our online worshiping congregation. I also invite you to connect to Church Center, which is our app and online resource that virtually connects you to our Connect card, signups for upcoming events, worship videos and resources, kids and family resources, and online giving to support the ministries and missions of Jerome Church. You can scan the QR code that's on the screen right now to connect or visit online at jeromechurch.org slash church dash center. Now, let's continue our new Worship in All Church Study series, Jesus Revealed, with today's message from Pastor Bruce. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Our first of two scripture passages both come from the book of John. The first comes from chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Our second reading comes from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. He told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home, seeing his neighbor and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was not. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees a man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was yours eyes he's open. The man replied, He is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that he can now see? We, we know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answers, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are his, this fellow's disciple? We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But for his, this fellow, we don't know where he comes from. 
The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me, so I, I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What, are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My father was a bit of an uh, amateur astronomer. I remember him loving to take out his telescope uh, and look up at the night sky. And he loved to share it with my sister and I and my mother. We saw stars and planets, and even one time we saw Halley's Comet uh, as it traveled uh, across the sky when we were on a trip down in Florida. It was just the most amazing thing I had ever seen. However, there was one other thing I really wanted to look at through his telescope. I, I understood that the distant stars were suns, and I understood what the planets were and why they twinkled, and uh, my dad had taught me all kinds of things, but the one thing I really wanted to do was to see what our sun looked like through that telescope. And my father said, absolutely not. He said, son, someday that will be possible, but you need a special filter because the sun is so bright that if you look through the telescope, the lens will magnify it and you'll damage your eyes. You may even go blind if you look too long. And so he said, you know, never look through the telescope up at the sun unless you have this special filter and we don't have it. And, and in fact, don't look up at the sun for a long time. That can damage your eyes too. So son, don't do that. And so as my father walked away and, and uh, I went to bed that night and I got up the next day and it was a beautiful summer day. And of course, what's the first thing I did? Went outside, looked up at the sun and stared and it hurt. <laughs> I can remember after that, all I could see were like flashes as I blinked. I could see the shape of the sun when I closed my eyes. Uh, it was one of the dumber things and not my brightest moment. Uh, and, and I remember that. Uh, and I never told my dad I did it because he knew I was going to do it as soon as he told me not to. I mean, what kid doesn't, you know, always listens to their parent. I was not that child, but I learned my lesson. And it only took me once, and I haven't done it since. Uh, even when there's, uh, even when there's a eclipse of the sun, I do the thing where you take the paper and poke the hole. Look it up, kids. It's a science project. You'll love it. Uh, and adults, you'll love it too if you've never done it. You find it out online how to do that. But as I grew up and got a little bit older and got into high school and started to take science classes, I began to understand what the sun's purpose was and actually understand the idea of what light was used for. Um, one of the most shocking things is that I discovered and had a, a teacher tell me that there's really no such thing as darkness. He said, darkness is nothing. And what it really is, is the absence of light. So as the light dissipates, there is nothing. And so darkness is nothing. And varying forms of darkness are just the absence of light. That always just amazes me. Now this brings up an interesting question. With the complete absence of light, we can see nothing. We are struck blind because we can't see without light. But what's also fascinating like that, I just told you a story about what happens when you look straight into a light. 
that can be blinding. Like if you're hiking or you're walking uh, and it's at night and somebody turns on a flashlight and shines it into your face, you can't see anything. If you look into a car that's driving towards you and they turn on their brights, the light becomes blinding. It's like at the two extremes, the absence of light and the fullness of light, we can be struck blind. And so what is the purpose of light? And why does Jesus say that I am the light of the world? Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You see, Jesus truly had an understanding, one of the main properties of light. You see, light is there not to stare at. It's also not there to hide from. Light is there to illumine the darkness, to make what is unseen seen, to show us what we can't see, to guide us. Now, in our scripture story today, Jesus went along after having a discussion with some Pharisees over him being the light of the world, and they did not understand this statement. They didn't understand what he means. But as he's traveling, he sees a blind man. And this man has been blind since birth. And so this caused the disciples to ask, who sinned, his parents or him? You see, in Jewish society, when a child is struck with something, a, a disability or a handicap or they're blind or they're deaf or they're mute, it is believed that it's the parents who have sinned and that sin has fallen upon the child as punishment. And so the disciples are simply asking the question from their Jewish beliefs, but Jesus shocks him a little bit when he looks at them and says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this has still happened. And because this has still happened, it must be so that God's work might be displayed in him or through him. Disciples, as long as it's day, we must go about and do the works of him who sent me, of God above. Night is coming when no one can work. But while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So he's telling the disciples to, we still must do the work. We have, look what has been illumined before us. Here's a man who's blind. And so Jesus seeing this and wanting to show the work that could be done in him and through him, spits on the ground, makes a paste, a mud, covers the man's eyes, and then tells him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. The man does this and can suddenly see, and he goes home. But as he travels home, everyone is in just disbelief. How is this man able to see? How is this man able to see who, isn't it the man who has always been blind, who we've always seen beg, and some said, yeah, it's him. Others said, no, it's not. So they don't know what to do with him. They just ask him how it happened, and they tell them about Jesus, and then they take him before the Pharisees. And the Pharisees ask him the exact same question. How did this happen? And he tells them the same story. And they say, when did this happen? And he goes, today, but today is the Sabbath. This man is a sinner to do this on the Sabbath. Jesus, I don't know how we can do this because sinners don't listen to God. So how did it happen? Obviously, you haven't been blind since birth. It, it must be something else. So they call forth the man's parents. And the, man, uh, the man's parents identify and say, this is our son. He has been this way since birth. Well, how did this happen? We don't know. Now, I believe in their hearts they knew. They were just frightened of being tossed out of the synagogue because it had already been declared that anybody who declares Jesus the Messiah would be tossed out of the synagogue. 
So they say, ask our son, he's of age, leave us out of it. I call forth the man again, ask him. And he says, why do you keep on asking me? I've told you how this happened. It was Jesus. Are you also looking to become his disciples? And this makes the Pharisees irate. We do not follow this sinner, this man. We follow Moses. We are children of Abraham. You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. And the man answers, now that is a remarkable thing. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. And we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. You want to know where this man comes from? Obviously, he comes from God, because if he's not from God, he could do nothing. And the, once again, the Pharisees irate. The man has basically declared Jesus the Messiah, and so they toss him out of the synagogue. And Jesus finds out about this and seeks out the man and says, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe in the Messiah? Yes, point him out to me and I will believe. Well, you see him now. He is before you and the man celebrates. And Jesus, noticing that there were some Pharisees around, says this. For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What, are we blind? And Jesus said, If you were blind, you could not be guilty of sin, but now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. You see, the Pharisees were spending their time focusing on seeing Jesus and the trouble he was causing them and the authority that he was taking away from them and the rules he had broken. He heals on the Sabbath. He's not teaching the law. What is he teaching? You see, they spent all their time looking straight at Jesus, at all his faults that they can find, all the reasons of why he could not be the Messiah to their understanding. They were walking at night when suddenly somebody shined a flashlight in their face. And even though they were looking straight at the light, they could see nothing. You see, if you hold a flashlight to your face at night, you're struck blind. But if you want to do something amazing, turn away from the flashlight. And suddenly all the darkness is illumined. The purpose of the light is met. You can see what is unseen. You see, Jesus comes to illuminate. The Pharisees did not understand the purpose of the light of the world. They didn't understand what it meant to illuminate the darkness. Jesus was God in the flesh and the closest humanity has ever gotten to truly understanding even a little bit of God and God's plan for creation, for God's plan of salvation. See, when we focus so much time staring into the light, we can miss what the light is trying to illuminate. We can become blind to what Jesus is pointing us to see. We can become focused on every dit and dash of rules. We can question others and say, well, they don't act very Christian. Instead of following Jesus and watching where he illuminates. We can come blind instead of seeing the hungry, seeking them out and feeding them. Seeking the hurt, the brokenness, those who are truly lost in darkness. You see, the continued call of Jesus and what he illuminates is God's will. Jesus points towards God. 
and for the mission that God has for us. It's a continued call to live out loving God, loving neighbor, and making disciples, others who will seek out Jesus, the light of the world, who will illumine and allow them to see into the darkness of this world. Give us a little vision of God and what God has called us to. Friends, let Jesus illuminate your life. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's good to be with you again in worship today. Today, we're continuing our new worship and study series as we grow deeper in our faith together, learning about the I am statements of Jesus found in the Gospel of John. As we continue together in worship today, I want to invite you again to connect to all of the resources in Church Center, which is our online hub for engaging with the ministries of Jerome Church. While you're there, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore the opportunities in the app as you find your ways to worship, serve, and grow here at Jerome. This weekend, we gathered to build the walls of a home in partnership with Help Build Hope and Habitat for Humanity. You can check out our Facebook page and group for more photos of this event. If you missed the opportunity to participate in this event, there is a new opportunity coming up on October 1st to travel to the Bowling Green, Ohio area to help raise the walls of this home at its permanent location. You can learn more about this opportunity in the app and on our website. This is also kickoff week as we continue our new series, Jesus Revealed, with small group learning opportunities beginning as soon as this evening and continuing for the next six weeks. If you aren't part of a small group or haven't signed up yet, I want to encourage you to register for the study and join in the pastor's class on Sunday evenings or the daytime study on Tuesdays. These two groups will meet in a hybrid online in-person format and are a great opportunity to meet new friends to grow in your faith together. You can register for the All Church Study through today's video description in the Church Center app or by visiting jeromechurch.org slash grow. The people of Jerome Church are committed to the mission that Jesus gave to us to love God 
and love people. And you can support the missions and ministries of this church by giving a financial offering today. You can give electronically through the link in today's video description on the Jerome Church website or through the Give tab in the Church Center app. And if you've made the decision to give for the first time today, you can connect to our online giving platform by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address that's on the screen below. As we end our time of worship together today, I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. I want to invite you to connect with us online this week through our social media platforms and in the Church Center app. And know that we look forward to worshiping with you again next week as we continue our new series, Jesus Revealed. Have a blessed week, friends. Mm -hmm.